So a couple months ago, what, seven, eight months ago? Jeez, time flies. I made a video about my breakup and I also spent most of 2018 being pretty personally bitter about romance and dating, which meant making positive dating advice videos was next to impossible for me. Wanna know how your long-term partner will stab you in the back and crush all your hopes and dreams? I got you covered, girl. Want actual advice on asking your crush out or how to tell if someone likes you? No, no, nah, you're not getting anything like that from me. But I've had some time to heal and I very tentatively entered into a new relationship that's actually making me happy. So basically, I feel like I've learned some things and I do feel slightly more hopeful. So then, what have I learned? So I was talking to a friend recently about wanting to make a video like this and how I've kind of come to all these realizations about my ex that I just couldn't see while we were in the relationship. And she was like, you should name this video hindsight is 2020 because that's basically what you're experiencing. And she's right. Now that I've detached myself from the relationship and begun the process of healing and moving forward, I can look back and see things that he said or did or ways that I felt like I needed to act in order to please him that are just huge red flags. And it's just like, how did I miss this? What is wrong with me? I think after a breakup, especially one where there was a certain level of codependency or abuse or unhealthy attachment, we can sometimes put the blame on ourselves for not seeing the signs. And like, yeah, looking back now, I totally see lots of red flags. But at the time, I was so enamored by him and his charisma that well, I just kind of swept anything unpleasant under the rug or into the closet at the back of my mind that never got opened. And eventually you just kind of get to this place where you've brainwashed yourself so you realistically can't see the signs. I made a lot of excuses for him, both to other people and to myself. I allowed myself to believe that there was something wrong with me and that I didn't deserve to be loved or respected the way that I craved. He told me that what I wanted was too much and I just believed that rather than questioning that perhaps he wasn't able to give me what I deserve and therefore I should move on. So on the one hand, it's made me much more cautious. My boyfriend will definitely tell you that because I approached everything involving him with distrust and this feeling that in a month or two, he'd be like, sake dummy, you actually thought anybody could genuinely care about you? You as dumb as a brick. By entering into a new relationship, I learned that I had created a lot of bad habits and coping mechanisms when it came to connecting with and trusting people. And by that, I mean not trusting people at all. I found that I was crippling myself in many ways, trying to accommodate this person that I had committed myself to, but I don't have to and shouldn't have to do that anymore for anybody. It wasn't healthy then, and I'm fortunately dating someone now who is very kindly helping me see some of the places that I'm still struggling with. Okay, all of this is to say that I am in a bit of a better place this year, I think, I hope, and I would like to start making dating advice and relationship content again. So I wanna know what kind of topics you guys wanna see from me. Like one idea I had was doing a video on how to text your crush and just kind of the appropriate way to navigate DMing people and stuff because boy, have I seen some fails and I wanna help you out. So if you have ideas or requests about dating or relationships, tell me down in the comments. And as always, remember that you can check me out on these other social media sites. And if you haven't already, don't forget to subscribe and hit that notification bell so you know the moment there's a new video. And I'll see you guys next Thursday, bye. <laughs>